Welcome to the second week of our discussion about the teaching of the macro skills. For this week, the objectives are the following. Identify the appropriate methods and approaches to teach the English macro skills and list down qualities of an effective English teacher in the macro skills. Let's talk about the review and communicative competence. So what comes to our students mind first when they hear communicative com uh, competence for them as a language learner if they were asked about the goal of language course is they would probably answer that it is to teach the grammar and vocabulary of that language however if they are asked what their goal is as language learners they would most probably answer that it is to be able to communicate in that language before with the subject we had acquisition of language when you were still uh, second year the pinakamagandang reason or objective for a student to learn a language is uh, for them to use it yung may practical use to communicate diba um, most of the researches na na present or na discuss natin before ay mas natututo ng mabilis yung isang estudyante if they uh, wanted to learn it kasi kailangan nila sa trabaho nila or there's a certain uh, practical use for um, the kaya sila nag-aaral With that, we are going to determine the competencies in order to understand them all and ensure our students will be able to be competent enough in speaking the second language, which is English. A language user needs to use the language not only correctly, that's based on linguistic competence, but also appropriately, based on communicative competence. Of course, this, uh, this approach does not diminish the importance of learning the grammatical rules of a language. In fact, it is one of the four components of communicative competence. We have the linguistic, social linguistic, discourse, and strategic competence. So what are the differences of these uh, four components in communicative competences? And why do we need these components so that our learners will be able to acquire the second language? Let's start with the linguistic competence. So, ano ba talaga ang meron dito sa lingu uh, linguistic competence? It's act, uh, it is the knowledge of the language code. Uh, for example, it's the grammar, vocabulary, and also conventions of its written representation, such as script and orthography. So, pag sinabing linguistic, uh, it's knowing how to use yung grammar, yung syntax, and yung vocabulary. So, anong mga specific questions na dapat natin tandaan once we uh, consider yung sa linguistic. Tinatanong talaga is, what words do I use? Then, what do I put them into phrase? How do I put them into phrases and sentences? Paano ka talaga mag um, create or mag structure ng sentence? Kano yung mga words or even the yung pagkasunod sunod ng phrases or words na sasabihin mo? The grammar component includes the knowledge of the sounds and their pronunciation, like phonetics, the rules that govern uh, sound interactions and patterns, or the phonology, formation of words by means of inflection and derivation, that we call as morphology, and the rules that govern the combination of words and phrases to structure sentences, and syntax, and the way that meaning is conveyed through language. We call it as semantics. For social, ling uh, social linguistic competence, it is the knowledge of social cultural rules of use, like knowing how to use and respond to language appropriately. The appropriateness depends on the setting of the communication, the topic, and the relationship among the people communicating. 
from the word social so it means you are interacting with someone the important questions that we can ask considering yung social linguistic competence is you know which words and phrases fit this setting and this topic so kung um kung ang isang tao ay namatayan diba we use yung mga words talaga like comforting words, condolence, or whatever. Kung ano man yung uh, gusto natin iparating that we uh, sympathize or empathize them. So, hindi mo pwedeng gamitin yung mga words or mga phrases like jokes if that person is suffering or having an emotional breakdown. Then, isa din sa question, considering dito sa social linguistic, how can I express a specific attitude is it through uh, yung courtesy or if you are talking to someone na mas mataas sa'yo, if it's your boss or if it's your teacher, paano maka, ka, makipag-usap sa kanila? Yung isang tao ba na mas mataas sa inyo or mas mas taas sa atin, it's, is it okay to use words like parang tropa-tropa lang or like we're friends, diba? we have to consider them as our boss, so you should, uh, we should speak courtesy with uh, courtesy and then uh, with respect to them. Or is it through friendliness? If you are working as a customer service, paano kaya makipag-usap sa mga customer mo? Are you going to speak like yung authoritative, authoritative ba yung voice mo, yung mga words? Or... It should be words yung mga friendliness, like you are, um, alam mo yun, tinatrato mo sila or are you showing respect to them when you need to? And then how do I know what attitude another person is expressing? Uh, kung ang isang tao nga ay malungkot, you should show care to them. Pero pag galit yung isang tao, galit na galit, are you going to use such words na nagjo-joke or nagpapatawa or sarcastic? Diba? Dapat alam mo kung dito sa social linguistic competence. Uh, most of the time, uh, bilib na bilib talaga ako dito sa mga tao na may social linguistic competence kasi alam nila kung saan sila uh, kung saan sila lulugar at Paano ba talaga nila ipapakita doon sa isang tao na nagre-respect sila? And then, uh, moreover, being appropriate depends on knowing what the taboos of other culture are, what politeness and dices are used in each case, what the politically correct term would be for something, how a specific attitude, you know, authority, friendliness, courtesy, irony, and is expressed or etc. Now, let's talk about the discourse competence. Ano ba tong discourse competence na to? So, it is the knowledge of how to produce and comprehend oral or written text in the modes of speaking or writing and listening or reading respectively. It's knowing how to combine language structures into cohesive and coherent oral or written texts of different types. It's about knowing how to interpret the larger context and how to construct yung longer stretch, uh, stretches of language so that the parts make up a coherent whole. Ang common na questions dito ay how are words or phrases and sentences put together to create conversations, speeches, email messages, or yung mga uh, newspaper articles. How about strategic competence? It is the ability to recognize and repair communication breakdowns before, during, or after they occur. For instance, the speaker may not know a certain word, thus will plan to um, either paraphrase or ask what that word is in the target language. Uh, it's knowing how to recognize and repair communication breakdowns Pag minsan, di ba, hindi natin naiintindihan yung sinasabi ng isang tao. So, we could ask what words or pwede nating i-paraphrase yung sinasabi nila. Normal na questions naman natin na he ask considering the uh, strategic competence is 
how do I know when I've misunderstood or when someone has min misunderstood me? What do I say then? How can I express my ideas if I don't know the name of something or the right verb form to use? Paano mo malalaman kung naintindihan ka ba doon sa, uh, sa kausap mo? Normally, uh, for example, dito yung mga customer service representative na nagtatrabaho sa call center. Since nag-uusap lang naman sila sa phone, di ba? Ang kagol talaga as a customer service representative, lalo na sa phone, is to short yung, alam mo yun, to save the time of the customer. At syempre, magastos din yun, di ba, over the phone, yung mag-uusap kayo, ang haba-haba ng pinag-uusapan nyo, concern ng customer. Tapos ang ending, di mo pala naintindihan. Or, you didn't really get kung ano ba talaga yung ibig sabihin ng customer. Kaya, normal na tinatanong, uh, I just want to make sure uh, ito yung gusto mo, di ba? Ganto, ganyo. You're calling about this matter. Tapos, pag umuon na si customer, yun na yung time na mag-move ka na for the, uh, for the solution. Hindi yung tipong magsasabi yung customer yung problem niya. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-direct dun sa solution. You have to ask again, ito ba yung ibig mong sabihin, ma'am? Ganto ba yung problema? Then, hintayin mo na mag-agree yung customer Tapos, pag may words ka na hindi mo naintindihan, you could ask the customer. Uh, limbawa, sasabi niya, um, I can't use the service. Ma'am, what do you mean by service? Uh, ito ba ay sa phone mo, sa internet mo? Alam mo yung ganun. You have to uh, make sure na naintindihan mo talaga yung sinasabi ng isang tao. And... Uh, Kaya mahalaga din tong strategic competence na to para alam mo yun, walang lituhan or hindi nagkakaroon ng gulo kasi you are asking kung um, tama ba yung pagkaintindi mo sa sinasabi niya. During the conversation, background noise or other factors may hinder communication. Thus, uh, the speaker must know how to keep the communication channel open. If the communication was unsuccessful due to external factors such as interruptions or due to the message being misunderstood, the speaker must know how to restore communication. Paano mo ngayon gagawin pag mali pala yung interpretation mo? So, ito yung... Uh, kaya, di ba, binigyan ko na example na magtatanong kayo sa kausap niyo, what do you mean by happiness? Or what do you mean by successful? Kung para sa taong yun, ang pagiging successful is about um, material things na mas marami kang pera, yun yung successful. Or sa isang tao ba to, ang meaning ba ng successful sa iyo ay yung taong natupad na yung pangarap niya. Or um, depende sa kanya kung ano yung ibig sabihin niya sa bagay na yun. So ano yung uh, what do I say then? Isa din sa mga tanong, how can I express my ideas if I don't know the name of something or the right verb to use? Ang perfect way lang talaga pag strategic competence is to um, you ask questions for clarification. These strategies may be requests for repetition, clarification, pwede ding slower speech, or the usage of gestures and taking turns in conversation. Kaya pag matatanda yung kausap nyo, di naman pwedeng mabilisan yung sinasabi nyo, di ba? You have to adjust. Kaya dito yung slower uh, speech. Tapos meron ding repetition. Sometimes kung di mo naintindihan yung uh, sinasabi na isang tao, just repeat yung sinabi niya. And in that way, mas it's a way then kung para ma-check nung kausap mo kung tama ba yung pagkaintindi mo. Review and communicative competence. So these four com uh, components of communicative competence should be respective in uh, respected in teaching a foreign language and they usually are by modern teaching methods employed in second language teaching. Usually, most of the above are best learned if the language learner immerses into the culture of a country that speaks the target language. 
Now let's find out the difference between the peaks versus the cull. So according to Common's iceberg theory, yung bex is nasa top. It's the context embedded or the basic interpersonal communication skills wherein the language necessary for day-to-day -day living, including conversations with friends, informal interaction. So pag interpersonal, may interaction or yun, tanungan lang diba, about friends or alam mo yung ano, uh, everyday na interaction natin sa tao. Yun yun sa basic interpersonal. So you can watch yung uh, sample video later on. I-send ko sa inyo with the link para ma-identify nyo yung pagkakaiba ng dalawang to. Pag sinabi naman natin CALP or Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency, it's the language necessary to understand and discuss content in the classroom. From the word cognitive, it's more on the mind. Tapos academic pa. Alam mo yun, uh, natatanong natin or nagagamit natin siya mostly dun sa uh, pag nasa school ang bata. Or the context reduce, fewer non-verbal cues and the language is more abstract. Kasi academic naman talaga siya. More on sa formal ang uh, ginagamit na words pag sa cal. Bigs and Culp are both acronyms that refer to the amount of time it requires new English language learners to develop the necessary conversational and academic skills in the uh, English language. The acronyms also refer to the grade appropriate academic proficiency in the same language. Each of the concepts mentioned above play a role in the language development process. The first one, the BEX, focuses on social language acquisition skills, and the other one, yung CALP, refers to the academic language acquisition. Nagkakaiba talaga tong dalawang to, kasi pag interper, uh, interpersonal, or dito sa BEX, ginagamit siya in interacting with other people outside on sa school. Pero dito sa CALP, uh, more on sa nangyayari siya sa school or about questions from uh, academic or subjects. Let's take a, a closer look at each of these concepts to better understand them since recognizing the difference is crucial for teachers who work with uh, non-native students. Pag ikaw ba as a teacher, di ba yung Sabi nga nung bata kanina, pag ini-interview sila or yung mga language learner, ang focus ng isang subject or isang course is to teach the grammar tapos yung structures ng um, language or more on sa linguistic na components ang focus. Pero, as a language learner, kaya mo naman talaga gustong pag-aralan yung subject because you wanted to have a practical use of it. Kailangan, kailangan mo, like, pupunta ka sa ibang bansa, and it's very important for you to study the language. Kaya dito rin yung sa BIX, tsaka CALP. Pag teacher ka, alam mo kung ano ba talang ifo-focus mo. Uh, kung sa batang to, kung marunong na siya or magaling na siyang uh, to use the sentences sa, uh, or magaling na siya sa BIX, sa interpersonal, Siguro dito tayo muna mag-focus dun sa CALP or more on sa Cognitive Academic. For basic interpersonal communication skills, these are language skills that people need in social situations. This type of language is what we use on the day-to-day -day basis to interact with others. For students, BIX is uh, essential for children to interact with their Years while they are playing at recess, during team sports activities, at lunch time, or socializing outside of school. This type of language skill is not profoundly cognitively demanding. Bigs usually develop between six months and two years after families arrive in the U.S. Madali-dali lang yung sa Bigs kasi pag na-practice mo na siya ng na-practice tapos ulit na, it would be easier for you to remember. Pag sa CALP naman, for Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency, 
It refers to the student's formal academic learning. The CALP concept deals with skills essential to academics such as listening, reading, speaking, and how to write about the relevant subject matter. Landing this language skill is a uh, crucial concept when it comes to students' academic success. It takes time and patience for students to become proficient in language skills necessary for academic learning. Kasi pag sa academic uh, learning talaga is napaka broad and ang daming vocabulary na dapat mong tandaan para mas ma-develop lalo yung comprehension skills mo. Kasi pag sa cognitive academic or dito sa CALP, pag hindi mo naiintindihan yung words na sinasabi na or yung words dun sa question, paano mo malalaman yung sagot, di ba? And how are you able to understand such sentence if your comprehension skill is mababa? Kaya matagal talaga uh, i-develop yung cult kasi marami kang i-consider yung comprehension, yung vocabulary mo, kung marami ka talagang alam na words at ano yung um, how will you answer question kung Hindi mo naman naintindihan kung ano yung term na yun, di ba? And it could take uh, between 5 and 7 years for a student uh, to acquire the appropriate level skill for their academics. Dito sa BICS or sa Basic Interpersonal Communication Skills, uh, it's usually between 6 months long and 2 years. Pero pag sa Cognitive naman or sa CULP, it take between 5 and 7 years. So, ang tagal talaga niya. It takes so much effort pag yung ikaw at as a teacher, yung focus mo ay sa cult. Dapat i-cover mo yung topics such as inferring, uh, classifying, comparing, evaluating, and synthesizing language for content matter. pag kasi kasi, diba, kung ano lang yung tinatanong, yun lang ibibigay mo. And, repetition lang siya, everyday lang siya na ginagamit. Pero pag academic, sobrang broad niya, sobrang lawak na academic, di ba? And even yung mga vocabulary, uh, vocabulary terms na ginagamit. And you have to know how to classify, i-compare mo, tapos mag-evaluate ka pa. If a student is not placed in a bilingual class processing the English language can be cognitively demanding because the student has to learn new ideas, concepts, and the English language all at one time. Jim Commons is the founder of this theory and he has dedicated a great deal of time and effort in these strategies to improve the learning experience for ELL students by separating this learning a language learning concepts. You can better understand the different ways to teach the ESL and bilingual students. A big takeaway to note is regarding the levels of attainment and recognizing we, uh, when to move a student into the academic portion of the uh, of the English language. Kaya talaga alam natin kung kailan tayo magpo-proceed. We have to um, give an assessment kung may progress na ba yung bata or do we need to return dun sa skill na pinapractice natin. Also, teachers must remember that a student who is successful in BEX doesn't necessarily mean they're ready to move toward academic language learning or CULP. CULP is a concept that requires a bit of patience for both the teacher and the students. When a student can achieve success in both of these areas, they can achieve great things here in the States. BICS and CULP may not be the same thing, but they are both necessary for language development in ELL students. Kaya maganda talaga na pag ang isang tao ay uh, madali lang sa Bex or na ma-master na siya paano makipag-interact dun sa tao at lalo na yung sa, cult, sa cognitive academic language. Uh, most of the time yung mga nag-aaral, uh, di ba pag sa mga native speaker na talaga or nakatira ka na sa states, madali lang i-develop yung sa Bex. Pero, pag ano naman, uh, minsan yung bata nahihirapan naman siya pagdating na sa, sa cult at Dito naman, pag sa most of the Filipinos, or kahit naman tayo, ba minsan ang hirap magkipag-usap 
sa or mahirapan tayo sa communication skills natin if we are talking to sa mga Americans kasi may mga terms sila na ginagamit na hindi pa natin naiintindihan. But if it's through CALP or dun sa cognitive academic language naman ay mas mabilis na lang sa atin kasi most of the time naman ay ginagamit siya sa different subjects natin lalo na yung uh, English talaga yung ginagamit as um, as a language like let's talk about the content based instruction or the CBI content based instruction is an approach to language teaching that focuses not on the language itself but rather in what is being taught through the language that is the language becomes the medium through which something new is learned from the word content dun tayo sa kung ano yung nilalaman ng instruction or dun sa teaching natin. In the CBI approach, the student learns the TL by using it to learn some other new content. For example, by studying yung sa French Revolution while using the French language. The language being learned and used is taught within the context of the content. The theory behind CBI says, uh, is that when students are engaged, with more content, it will promote uh, intrinsic motivation. Uh, in remembering about intrinsic motivation, dito na yun sa um, practicality or kung alam mo na magagamit mo sa sarili mo, yun yung intrinsic. But if you are provided a reward or externally ka na motivated or sa iba, that's extrinsic motivation. Pero pag sa content-based uh, instruction kasi, di ba, pag yung subject mo ay, uh, bawa, you will learn the, or master dun nga sa French na subject, and then you'll be studying French uh, revolution. So, mas matutunan mo yung French language through mastering it by reading a content, or may mga stories ka na na nalalaman. Hindi lang siya nasa ibabaw or to use it yung basic lang. Dapat mas naging deeper, nagiging mas uh, tumataas din yung difficulty level. Kasi para ikaw as a student, pag uh, kusun mo matuto dun sa language na yun, dapat mamamaster mo talaga siya. Kasi pag hindi, paano ka nga maka-move forward diba, sa next level? And students will be able to use more advanced thinking skills when learning new information and will focus less on the structure of the language. This approach is very student-centered as it depends entirely on the student's ability to use the language. Kasi pag hindi ka din marunong, uh, parang ganta lang yan eh. You are studying the English language. Lots of, you know, how to read Tapos, alam mo na din yung, uh, you have lots of words na din na alalaman uh, in dun sa English language. However, pag nagbabasa ka na ng stories, lalo na pag content-based yung instruction, mas mag effort ka talaga na intindihin yung buong story, hindi ka lang mag-focus dun sa each word. Dapat yung comprehension level mo ay dapat mong um, gamitin at mas lalo mo dapat na i-improve. What can be considered content? There are many things that can be consid uh, considered as content. What is important is that what is being taught or discussed through the language not be language instruction related. Aspects of the curriculum, discussion about current events and world cultures or even general topics of interest are all valid content options. Ayun, mas nagiging malawak yung uh, learning ng isang bata. Hindi lang siya sa, ano ba, sa BIX kasi, di ba, inter, uh, pers um, interpersonal lang siya. Kung may specific na topic, for example, nagtatanong ka kung kumain ka na ba? Um, or kung are you done with your assignments? Alam mo yung ganun mga tanungan lang, yung everyday na words or discussion lang. But for the content base, um, marami ka talagang i-focus more on like, for example, current events. Were you able to provide an opinion on your own? 
based on sa opinion uh, sa current events na yon or sa culture mas naiintindihan mo ba yung culture ng isang bansa or even yung general topics of interest so yun yung mga valid na content options how can CBI be used in the language classroom? Paano mo yun agagamitin as a language teacher? It's not enough to simply integrate content into the language classroom. It must be done effectively. According to Stoller of 2002, uh, he lists eight practices that allow for natural content integration. Dapat natin tong alalahanin pag lalo na pag sa uh, we're teaching the language para alam natin kung kasi pag teacher de ba hindi lang naman ang um, ipo-focus natin paano sumagot or anong dapat na um, words na sasabihin pag bibigay tong specific question na to. Dapat alam din natin paano gagamitin pag sa content base kasi pag teacher you are teaching a topic or may specific current events ba, or may mga history na dapat malalaman ng mga sudyante natin. Okay, here are the eight practices na that will allow for natural content integration. First, extended input. Yung... Uh, when you discuss a subject or a certain topic to the students, you could ask input to them. You can ask their opinions or what's their uh, stand dun sa um, current event na yun. Yung meaningful output, uh, asking them to create or be it evaluating something. So, pwede na siyang maging output. Meaningful in a way na uh, maraming natutunan yung bata and feedback in language and grasp of content. Um, yung giving of feedback, kasi nade-develop mo sudyante yung sa evaluating, analyzing nung isang certain na um, content. And information gathering, the processing, and reporting. Uh, in short, dito yung uh, nade-develop yung research ng isang bata. Aside of mastering the language, giving this type of activities sa like research kung saan nagagather sila ng information, mas nadidevelop yung kaalaman nila in learning the language. At mas nabibigyan mo pa sila ng, alam mo yun, pinapalaki mo yung world nila. Integrated skills using reading, writing, speaking, and listening in natural classroom activities. Pag sa uh, teaching the English as a second language talaga, dapat uh, yung macro skills na to ay dapat nating laging dinidevelop or laging nating ini-integrate sa klase. Dapat uh, as much as possible, walang naiiwan dyan sa apat na yan in giving classroom activities. Task-based activities and project work enhanced by cooperative learning principles. Nowadays, most, most of the students talaga ay tumataas yung grades or mas maganda yung performance nila if it's cooperative learning. Kasi nandun yung brainstorming ng iba't ibang bata and they could provide their own opinions. And um, kaya mas lalong nagiging confident yung bata. Alam mo yun, hindi lang siya mag-isa. Um, kaya mas maganda in providing activity talaga uh, you provide it starting dun sa group tapos by peer tapos less na yung individual kasi unti-unti mong nade-develop ng confidence hindi yung bigla ang solo lang agad for example sa research ba maganda yung mag-start kayo by group kasi nakaka-gain ng knowledge yung bata alam mo yung feel niya na uh, Pareho lang sila ng level ng kaklase na instead of um, giving the research directly yung solo agad. Kasi 
yung bata, hindi niya alam yung gagawin niya. Paano siya makakuha ng support from the other classmates? And we have the strategy training to produce more metacognitively aware strategic <coughs> learners. So, pag sinabi natin uh, metacognitive thinking about thinking, um, alam natin kung, alam yan, mabibigyan mo ng strategy yung bata or techniques, o dapat para mas madaling matutunan na ito, you can use this uh, technique, yung uh, using the mnemonics, or there are lots of techniques na malalaman pa natin for that type of um, yung lessons na ini-integrate natin sa klase. And we have visual support, images, the graphic organizers, and language ladders. So, Mostly, pinibigay talaga yung visual support sa mga students or yung mga visual learners. Mas natututo sila pag may nakita silang pictures. And contextualized grammar uh, instruction. Lastly, culminating synthesis activities. Knowledge is displayed, uh, displayed in writing and orally. So, pwede mo siyang i-written uh, or dun sa oral communication, yung way of checking them if they learn something. Uh, mostly dito naman sa culminating activities na to, pwede kang pagawa ng program na kung saan showcase nila yung talents nila sa speaking tsaka sa um, writing. Moving on, let's discuss about the communicative language teaching. Communicative language teaching or CLT, which is an approach to the teaching of second and foreign languages, emphasizes interaction as both the means and the ultimate goal of learning a language. It is also referred to as the communicative approach from the word communication, di ba? Uh, natututo yung bata, yung approach na to ay through pakikipag-usap. Historically, CLT has been seen as a response to the audio lingual method or ALM as an extension or development of the notional functional syllabus. Task-based language learning, a more recent refinement of CLT, has gained consider uh, considerably in popularity. Kasi pag sa communicative language teaching, mas ano, active yung learning, hindi siya passive Kasi pag nagbabasa lang, di ba, or nakikinig lang yung bata, more on passive, nag-receive uh, nag lang siya or nag-absorb lang ng information. But for communicative language, merong ibibigay yung teacher, meron din feedback kaagad from the students. Kasi communication, merong sa messenger, meron din dun sa um, um, yung sender, yung speaker, tsaka receiver ay nagkakaroon ng interaction. Shortcomings of structuralism and behaviorism, the theories underlying the audiolingual method and the situational language teaching were widely criticized during the 1960s. Say to see Noam Chomsky, for instance, uh, rejected the structuralist view of language and demonstrated that there is a distinction between performance and competence. The goal of the linguist is to study the linguistic competence native speakers are endowed with. Yeah. May uh, pagkakaiba nga daw um, yung structuralism at behaviorism naman talaga. And uh, between the words na performance and competence, meron yung distinction. So sa tingin nyo, ano ba talagang pagkakaiba? or distinction ng uh, performance and competence. Ngayon, alamin natin bakit kaya para kay uh, Noam Chomsky ay magkaiba yung competence sa performance. Uh, for Chomsky's theory, he distinguished the underlying knowledge of language from the way language is actually used in practice. According to him, language performance may be affected by such as attention, stamina, memory, and etc. Therefore, a theory of language should be a theory of 
competence. Once a full theory of competence is developed, it can be integrated into a theory of performance, which will also be considered other cognitive abilities. Para sa kanya, uh, mas maganda talaga yung or mas mataas dapat yung competence kaysa sa performance. Kasi ang performance pwede siyang maapektuhan nga naman kung may distraction yun sa attention or dun sa memory ng bata. Uh, pag sinabi kasi nating competence, it is a person's underlying subconscious or linguistic ability to create and understand sentences, including sentences they have never heard before. It's a person's acquaintance with a set of grammatical rules and is different from the actual linguistic activities. Uh, dito sa linguistic competence, nag-include siya ng components such as phonetics, phonology, syntax, uh, semantics, and morphology. Kaya pag competence, mas buo talaga siya or mas complete set na siya kasi halos ando na lahat. Even yung performance ay part na doon. Pag sa competence kasi, it enables yung mga native speaker to recognize ambiguous sentences or accept even apparently meaningless sentences as synth uh, syntactically correct and even making some sense. Uh, even if you've never heard this before, you know which one is English and which one is isn't. Pag galimbawa mga sentences na to, eight very lazy elephants drunk brandy or eight elephants very lazy brand, uh, brandy drunk. Pag sa mga um, native speakers, sobrang dali na nila intindihin kahit yung mga bagay na, ano ba yan, kahit mali naman yung ano, pagkasunod-sunod ng sinabi. Para sa kanila, um, it's syntactically correct kasi naintindihan nila, andun yung competence. It is the real-world linguistic output. Pinaka-output na yung performance may accurately reflect competence, but it also may include speech errors. Performance may be flawed because of memory limitations, meron distraction, shifts of attention and interest, and errors or other psychological factors represents only a small sample of possible appearances. Uh, um, kaya dito, pag ikaw as a student, kahit sobrang galing mo talaga in terms of competence dun sa language, uh, uh, learning the language, pag dito naman sa performance talaga, ay maraming pwedeng mangyari. Kahit parang ano na yan, pag memorize ng poem, ba? Sobrang naintindihan mo na or you were able to read it so perfectly, fluently, pero pag you're performing it in front, nandun na yung kaba, there are lots of changes na pwedeng mangyari. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng i-judge yung galing ng isang tao based lang dun sa isang performance niya. Or hindi mo ma-check yung competence kung um, nakikita mo lang sa isang uh, pangyayari lamang. It should be a couple of practices or um, presentations na isang bata. Performance error. Yung performance of a speaker may not be fault-free even though his competence is perfect. Kasi kahit sobrang galing mo, hindi ba sabihin ay yung performance mo ay laging perfect talaga. Halimbawa, dito sa learning and riding a bike, if you're still learning the bike, kahit na mamaster mo na lahat, kung paano magbalance or kung anong dapat gawin bago ka liliko. But it doesn't mean na yung performance mo in riding a bike ay laging perfect. Maraming uh, factors na pwedeng mangyari. Sa future language teacher, bakit kaya uh, mahalaga sa atin na dapat nagkaroon ng distinction between competence at performance tulad nung sinabi ni Noam Chomsky kasi nga, it allows those studying a language to differentiate between a, spe a speech error and not knowing something about the language. To understand this distinction, it is helpful to think about a time when you've made some sort of error in your speech. Kaya, di ba, may iba't ibang... Uh, there should be varied activities that will that should be provided the teacher 
to check talaga yung intelligence or level ng understanding ng bata. Kasi hindi big sabihin na mali-mali siya dun sa performance niya, sa pag-memorize ng isang speech, ibig sabihin ba nun, wala nang hindi na competent, competitive enough yung studyante or wala siyang nalaman about the language, ba diba? Kasi sobrang daming uh, factors na pwede maka-apekto pag sa performance. A shift towards communicative proficiency. The increasing interdependency between the European countries necessitated a need for a greater effort to teach adults the principal language of the continent. New goals were set in language teaching profession. So, ito na yun. Uh, first one is the paramount, uh, paramount importance of communication aspects of language. The increasing interest in meaningful learning. Maganda talaga na may interest ang isang estudyante or ang isang bata para mas lalong mapaganda yung um, learning process ng teacher tsaka ng student. Kasi pag wala naman talagang interest yung bata, mas mahihirapan ang isang teacher to motivate them. The growing centrality of the learner in teaching the process, the subordinate importance of structural teaching of language, Lagi naman, kasi pag language talaga yung tinuturo, may process talaga siya at may structure na dapat sinusunod hanggat maaari. Notional or functional dimension of language, applied linguists and philosophers addressed another fundamental dimension of language, the functional and communicative potential of language. The speech act theory showed that we do something when we speak a language. We use language according to holiday of 1975. Okay, we have here the notional or functional dimensions of language. First, to get things. Kung may kukunin kang bagay, you use a language, diba? To control behavior. Kahit yung mga animals, diba? For us to control them. May language talaga or your words na ginagamit. Kasi pag more on actions lang or gesture, mas nahihirapan intindihin yun, di ba? Mas maganda talaga if there's a specific language. And to create interaction with others. You know, it's so hard to create naman talaga interaction. Lalo na pag iba yung language na ginagamit mo. Kaya nga yung English ay uh, sobrang halaga. Kasi... Uh, kahit saan kang pumunta na bansa, you can use English, di ba? As a language. To express personal feelings. Paano mo express yung nararamdaman mo sa isang tao, di ba? Kung hindi na, ka naman niya naiintindihan. Or you are not even uh, saying the words at all. Si sabi nga nila, di ba? Um, don't assume unless, uh, unless stated. Kung hindi naman talaga sinabi. But ka mga assume de ba? And to learn, uh, even reading, writing, de ba? Lagi talagang uh, alam mo yung language para matuto ka. And to create a world of imagination for creativity, kasi paano nga ba? Ano bang pwede mangyari? Uh, does it mean pag wala kang language, hindi ka makakapag-imagine? Uh, dito naman, kino-consider na pag isang word, de ba? If you know the meaning of uh, that specific word, syempre you could imagine it at mas magagamit mo yung uh, creative skills mo to create the world. Kasi, ano ba, sa pagbabasa ng libro, kung hindi mo naman talaga naiintindihan yung language na yun, paano mo maiisip yung mga nangyayari, ba? Diba? And lastly, to communicate information. So, haros, uh, para-paraho lang siya ng expressing your feelings. Now, let's talk about the difference between yung notional at functional. Pag sinabi natin notional categories, ito yung mga concepts such as time, yung sequence, quantity, location, at frequency. Pero pag sa functional categories naman, ito yung mga request forms, complaints, invitation, and etc. Nagbe-base talaga siya sa functionality. And for Chomsky, yung focus ng linguistic 
was to describe yung the linguistic competence that enables the speaker to produce grammatically correct sentences. Para naman kay Delheims, uh, he advocated na yung need for a theory that incorporates communication competence. Language competence or numerous competence. Uh, later, si Canale and Swain of 1980 described four dimensions of communicative competence. So, ito yung apat na yun. Uh, the first one is the grammatical competence. Refers to what Chomsky calls linguistic competence. Uh, ito yung mga uh, so grammar and so vocabulary. And we have the social linguistic competence that refers to an understanding of the social context in which communication takes place. That there's a role relationship, shared beliefs, and information between participants. I already discussed yun yung kanina, yung mga competences na to. Yung four uh, components. And we have the discourse competence. It refers to the interpretation of individual message elements in terms of their interconnectedness and how meaning is presented in relation to the entire discourse or text. And lastly, yung sa strategic competence that refers to the coping strategies that participants use to initiate, maintain, repair, and redirect communication. For learning theory, according to the communicative approach, in order for learning to take place, emphasis must be put on the importance of these variables. Ano kanong mga variables na to na ifo-focus natin for the learning theory? First, we have communications, so, mga activities that involve real communication promote uh, learning. Kasi nga naman, di ba, pag wala namang practical use para sa bata or para sa estudyante, uh, paano mo develop yung interest nila? Kung para sa kanila man, nakikita nila na ah, parang wala namang silbi yung pinag-aaralan namin. And second, yung task. Uh, these are the activities in which language is used to carry out meaningful tasks to support the learning process. Pag, ma, pag yung mga activities mo ay makabuluhan at para sa kanila ay uh, enjoyable naman, mas uh, giging uh, motivated yung bata na gumawa ng activities. And of course, meaning. Language that is meaningful and authentic to the learner boasts uh, learning. Kaya uh, mostly sa mga bata, yung mga activities na gusto talaga nila is yung by group Tapos, more on sa yung mga drama. Kasi, na-express nila at napapractice nila yung mga acting skills nila. At, mas nabuboost mo yung confidence ng bata. What's the difference between acquiring and learning? Stephen Krishan later advocated in his language learning theory that there should be a distinction between learning and acquiring. He says acquisition as a basic process involved in developing language proficiency and distinguishes this process from learning. Uh, pag sinabi kasi nating acquisition, uh, it is an unconscious process that involves the naturalistic development of language of proficiency while yung learning is the conscious internalization of the rules of language. It results in explicit knowledge about the forms of language and the ability to verbalize this knowledge. Learning, according to Krishan, cannot lead to acquisition. Uh, pag sa acquiring kasi, you're acquiring um, unconsciously. Di mo naman talaga alam kung na-acquire mo ba talaga, di ba? Unless it could be seen dun sa mga performances mo or um, you're leaving it not just by words but by action. Pero dito sa learning, you are consciously doing it. Nag-memorize ka or tinatandaan mo yung mga bagay-bagay. For syllabus, it's a communicative language teaching syllabus organize the teaching according to the notional and functional categories of language rather than according to its structure. Um, 
like even sa teaching different subjects or lessons naman talaga kailangan yung syllabus para it will serve as your guide uh, or as your way of um, para ma-reach mo talaga or ma-meet yung objectives ng topic mo. So, here are the reasons why we need to use the syllabus. Uh, for interactions, of course, using language to communicate for the task kasama din doon sa ginagawa using language to perform meaningful tasks and for the learners putting uh, them uh, their interests needs in the forefront here are the merits of CLT it's a holistic approach parang kabuoan siya it doesn't focus only on the traditional structural syllabus it takes into consideration new communicative dimension and language and CLT provides vitality and motivation within the classroom and it also uh, CLT is a learner centered approach it capitalizes on the interests and needs of the learners pag uh, ganun talaga pag holistic it's more on a centered approach at um it's somewhat like existentialism na way of teaching kasi uh, you wanted to develop yung full potential ng isang bata kung saan talaga sila mag excel at ano yung mga skills and capabilities nila. In a world where communication of information and information technology have broken new considerable ground, CLP can play an important role in education. But there are uh, criticism also that notional syllabus was criticized as merely replacing one kind of list. So you can read it in your end kung ano-ano to mga criticisms na to. That requirements are difficult, not all classrooms can allow for group work activities and for teaching aids and materials. Sobrang dami na criticism talaga niya.